ladies and gentlemen and everyone else, welcome to Drinks Coach. All lowercase, Drinks Coach UK, Vine Sack. Uh, yeah, contact me. Talk to me about these shows. Uh, let me know what content you like, what you don't like. Uh, you are watching this on YouTube. So uh, hit, hit the bell if you want subscriptions and uh, notifications of future shows. Um, yeah, sorry about the hair. I've kind of uh, syruped it down. It's not, it's not behaving itself today. I feel like a Lego man. Um, so uh, this is a very barren set for Wadsack, isn't it? Well, apparently on Monday it was World Whiskey Day. On a Monday? I mean, come off it. There's a world something day every day. Why did whiskey have to be on a Monday? I like to get at least past hum day before I start tanking into the uh, the malt whiskies and scotches and so forth. Um, so uh, a delayed gratification. Um, everyone was telling everyone about whiskey on Monday. I prefer to wait until I get my own spotlight, which is now. Um, yes, and uh, come on Liverpool at the weekend. Come on. Be burned yesterday. Very, very excited about all of that. Um, so, uh, yes, we could still be in the European Championships, but enough about that. Um, I've got different whiskies to show you, uh, mostly traditional whiskies. Um, there are some noticeable exceptions, uh, particularly this one, which I've shown you before. I think exactly a year ago in World Whiskey, I showed this. Um, and I'm not showing you that because it's empty. Um, but my wife and I love this. It's a Japanese whiskey, it's around the £35 mark, I think it is. Um, and it's an absolutely fantastic session scotch. And if you like your highballs with soda and lemon and everything else, uh, the way the Japanese have it is absolutely made for it. But it's just such an elegant, easy, light whiskey. Um, what can I say? Nick a day's thumbs up. I love the packaging as well. And this bottle's kind of reusable. I might put bath salts in it or something. Right, okay. Uh, what we're going to start with. Yeah, this one. We'll try this one. Okay, this is um, these are mostly going to be fantastic scotches, um, malts in general. So um, this is Loch Lomond, twelve-year-old. Um, if you have absolutely no sense of geography whatsoever and you have no idea, um, right? Scotland's north of England. Okay, it's a bit at the top, and it looks like somebody's put kind of like a kind of a gash right through the middle of it, and then the middle of the gash there's rather a large lake, or as they call them in Scotland, Loch. And that large one, the giant one in the middle, is called Loch Lomond. And that's where this distillery is. So it's mid-highlands. Um, interesting little drink. The reason why I bought this is actually it was on Whiskey Exchange um, at a cut price. I think it might still be at the reduced price um, of under £30, which I thought was worth having a gander at. Um, it's interesting. It's different. It's certainly worth the money. Um, I just wanted to talk about it a little bit. Um, got this lovely little... Uh, Whiskey glasses from uh, Lakes Distillery in England. Thank you very much. Mm. It's very strange. The, the nose of this drink is, um, I know, it's hard to describe, but it's not very whiskey-ish. It smells almost like, um, <laughs> in a good way, um, your, your mum's just polished a wooden table, bit of Mr Sheen. <laughs> that smell of kind of French polish, or just po clean polish. Um, it has that kind of weird smell, almost like a, uh, almost a gluey smell, um, which is not selling it, I know. Um, but I think it's absolutely delicious. It tastes so much more exciting than it smells. And it's conjuring up also the taste of raisins, muscovado sugar, mace. Not the stuff you get in your face. The other one, you know, um, the one around the nutmeg. Call it nutmeg. Should we call it nutmeg? Um... Lovely kind of cosy spices. It's a nice evening dram to have possibly after dinner, especially on a chilly day. You can probably hear my shutters rattling because it's bloody windy outside. Maybe that's the day for Loch Lomond, 12 year old. So there you go. That's number one. Uh, usually around £40. Um, it was recently on offer. I'm not sure if it still is, but I'll check and put the details um, in the pull down on YouTube for you to have a look at. OK, so that's number one. Where are we going next? Well, sticking with the Highland theme and the Spey theme, here we've got uh, one of the most famous whiskey names in the world, maybe the most famous malt whiskey name, Glenfiddich. Now, I grew up 
when there was a time, when there was a time, when Glenfiddich was almost the only mock whiskey anybody had heard of, or anybody knew, and everyone drank it. Um, with social media and things, the, you know, there's a democratisation, a levelling of the playing field that we never had when I grew up. Um, and it was the people that could afford to advertise that got their faces known. Um, there was one port, which was Coburn's Special Reserve, because at Christmas they always had some stupid advert going, Cockburns? No, Coburn's! Um, like that. And um, Glenfiddich Glenfiddich was pretty much it. If you were um, minting, you had a few quid in your pocket. You bought a bottle of the Macallan from Speyside, um, the world's most expensive whiskey in the in the main from the famous Edrington Group, which I'll come on to in a moment. Um, but Glenfiddich um, in those days, I think, was an eight-year-old expression, which is quite young. It was very young for a malt whiskey at the time. Most malt whiskey, because um, you know the, their fortunes weren't quite what they are now. The world, the global market of whiskey, wasn't as buoyant and as vibrant as it is now um so it, it it was a very light uh very unsherried so very pale in color very serially very youthful whiskey um i don't think the eight-year-old even exists anymore it probably does in special uh, limited bottlings um but now the, the standard expression i think is the 12 year old i can't remember I mean, it's so long since i had the 10 the 12 year old i can't remember um but um the reason why i'm talking all about all this and blah, 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 about glenfiddich is because also, at Whiskey Exchange in their sale, and I still think it's on. Normally, if you buy a quarter bottle, it's about eighteen pounds, which means that works up to what it means about seventy-five quid for a whole bottle. If you buy it in small miniature, like this is a twenty cl bottle, which is just slightly bigger than a quarter of a main bottle, um, it's a fiver off one of these. So this is thirteen ninety-five. So blah, 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 that's about sixty quid. Well, a whole bottle costs sixty quid, so it's the same price in the miniature as it is in a big one. So I thought, yeah, fair dues. That's pretty clever. I'll go and try it. So um, if that was their intention, it worked. This is a fifteen-year-old, but it's not any old fifteen-year-old because a lot of whiskies do this. Um, not many people talk about it, but it's not really strictly a whiskey that's over 50 well it is a whiskey that's over 50 years old but it's a Solera system which is the same way they age sherry go back to my sherry shows from last year put in the drinks coach uk sherry and i'll tell you about the Solera system but basically what you're doing is you're building pardon me you're building um up the age of a whiskey and the complexity of whiskey by mixing it from one barrel to another to another another and then finally when the barrel is released um or a bottling is made they take out maybe 100 bottles from a barrel and then that's immediately refilled with fresh fresh whiskey which keeps the whole process much fresher um, enormous amounts of complexity because you're literally mixing every single vintage with every other um, and you end up with a very sophisticated drink and bearing in mind also the whole time um, alcohol is evaporating into the air you must have heard of the phrase the angels share um, the government and the tax office even know about exactly how um, how much um, alcohol is evaporated into the air in Scotland every year so they can do it as a tax write-off um, and a 15 year old whiskey is that much more concentrated than a 12-year-old or a 10-year-old or an 8-year-old. So uh, let's just try this. Um, this is one of the most decorated whiskies in the world, if we're talking in terms of competition medals and so forth. Uh, much darker colour. Well, actually, it's not that much darker. Very, very similar. Um, it just has more of an old patina about it. I don't really know if I'm talking nonsense or not. Anyway, sludger. I mean, it's a very brooding, concentrated... Uh, much more complex aroma. Um, the reason I'm f grabbing for words is I don't know where to start. It's kind of um, butterscotch, barley sugar. Um, there's some lovely dried herb. Um, I'm going to add a drop of water. This is okay. This is legit. It's what I call a threat. A threat of water. I don't, I don't know if that's a threat, which I think is like a thread, or threat, or threatening it with water. But um, the famous Wallace Mulroy, who owned the very famous whiskey shop, on, in Soho, which is now both a whiskey shop and a fantastic bar. Uh, Wallace Murray um, uh, once said to me, uh, it's okay to drink water because water in whiskey is like dew on a rose, which I thought was a wonderful way to express it. Um, he, of course, died from drinking. Anyway, so, wow. The moment you put the water in, it aromatises the thing. It's an insanely aromatic whiskey. Um, now, a lot of Scottish whiskey is really split into two fundamental types really or three fundamental types those that are darker in color which means they've been aged in barrels which already have flavor um so there'll be a sherry barrel or a bourbon barrel 
Um, and also those there are those which, when they malted the barley, they used a fire made from peat, which makes the barley very, very smoky. And that comes all the way through. And of course, if you drink the island whiskies, which we'll come on to in a moment, they can smell very, very bonfiery, or the smell of sweet cherry wood, or the smell of a smoked kipper, which I find extremely attractive. Um, and there's different kinds of smoke, depending on the kind of peat and, and the combination of where that distillery is in relation to the sea. Is there a lot of brine and, and, and wind? Are there other influences? And some, some of these uh, briny whiskies uh, can taste a bit seaweedy and briny and green, and some are much purer and drier than that. Anyway, is there peat in here? Well, there certainly is, um, but it's uh, very much um, the triangle section of the orchestra. <laughs> it's right at the back. Oh, it grabs you, it, your attention straight away. When you put the wine, the, the whiskey in your mouth, it's like a, a tr it's like a fan blast. It's like there's lots of flavours at once, and you get the sweetness, and you get the spice, and um, and then it just starts to unravel into these wonderful flavours which you can taste from the barrels it's been aged in. Um, I can taste Oloroso sherry now. I can taste hay. I can taste um, a very very slight hint of like Ethiopian coffee, light coffee. Oh. Be very hard not to do a whole one of those in front of the football, especially if we stay in the European Cup on Sunday. Okay, so delicious whiskey. You can try this now rather than having to pay the full whack of sixty or seventy pounds um, by going online. I think at the Whiskey Exchange, and you can buy this um, at a discount now. I'm now going to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much uh, to the contribut contributors of the next three whiskies, which I didn't pay for. So, yeah, it's not all um, plain sailing, but sometimes you have a good day. Uh, and Guy Woodcroft, who is the head buyer at Master of Malt, very kindly donated me two whiskies, which I pleaded for uh, in order to do this show properly, because their whiskies are drunk during the year. Uh, we're that late into uh, into uh, um, lockdown and, you know, me not getting paid anything by the government that, you know, um, a little handout doesn't hurt for me for this show. Um, so the next two whiskies certainly were given to me by Master of Malt. So I'm just... Uh, Declaring my hand there. But they are whiskies I picked specifically because I wanted them on the show. Number one. We're going into peat territory now. Bowl. These are the big smoky whiskies which my wife loves. And most people, I think, kind of identify purely with Scotch, Scotch whisky. That strong peatiness. Um, look at that. Isn't that a beautiful label? I love this label. And I love this whisky. This is such a great session whisky. This is called Aerolite Lindsay. What an odd name. Age 10 years, single malt whiskey, Isla, Aerolite Lindsay. Well, here's a funny story. Um, I used to fly an Aerolite um, somewhere in the States. I can't remember where exactly. They build three-axis microlites. That's like a microlite plane. You know, the ones which look like a, like a hang glider with an engine on. But they're three-axis, which means they're actually a frame like an aircraft. So it's an ultralight aircraft with a Rotax air-cooled engine on the back. And I learned to fly in an Aerolite 103 um, um, from Compton Abbas, amongst other things. And it was the only way that I could afford to keep my hours up rather than have to rent Cessnas, uh, which are much more expensive to fly. Um, and I flew from somewhere near Dorchester in Dorset all the way to Penzance and back on two gallons of fuel. That works out at 65 miles to the gallon. Who says that air travel has to be expensive? Um... Uh, really great times. I don't use my pilot's license anymore. It's, it's, it's lapsed. But one day, hopefully, I'd like to fly again. But anyway, Aerolite Lindsay. I think they've... <laughs> I don't know if they know that there is a microlite called the Aerolite. Um, but uh, if you take a long, hard look at that and you zone out in the middle of the night while you're supping away, you may suddenly realise, have your epiphany moment, that it's an anagram of 10-year-old Isla. Isn't that cool? It's a 10-year-old Isla. It even says so on the front. Look, to age 10 years, uh, Isla in the red, in the middle. Um, Aerolite Lindsay, an anagram, 10-year-old Isla. Um, there's a guy, a real character and a real kind of legend in the whiskey industry. I think his name's Sam Simmons. Um, uh, I, a guy called David Broom, who's also very well-known in the whiskey industry, once talked to me about this chap. And I believe that he's behind the character of Isla Range or the character of Isla Whiskey Company. And what he's done is he's gone and bought whiskey and had it aged and conditioned the way he wanted to, like um, like like other matures of whiskey, like Gordon and McPhail or whatever, or the Whiskey Society, for example, um, and had it done his way. Um, 
and I, th you, you tend to find, I think, tend to find that if you go out and buy a bottle of Isla whiskey, a Lafroig, um, uh, a Beaumont, um, an Ardbeg, um, a uh, Kalila, uh, and hopefully soon again, one of my great favourite whiskies of all time, Port Ellen, which is being rebuilt. Uh, when you buy those whiskies, they are, tend to have almost no colour, very, very pale, because I think there's a real sense of purity in the, in the, in the house expression. They really want to give you that full blast of fresh briny breeze and smoke and peat and the wind across your face and the rain and uh, the smell of cordite out of your shotgun when you're shooting woodcock on a New Year's Eve. Um, the whole Scottish experience. And actually, when you add sherry to that, it, it can be magnificent, and it really is magnificent, but it's not necessarily the standard practice. So what he's done here is he's filled it, um, uh, this whiskey into um, two different types of wood. I think there's some bourbon and some um, old sherry casks. Um, as you can see, it's um, a little bit darker, I think, than a lot of Isla whiskey that you would go and buy in the street. Uh, which one is it? Sworn to secrecy. Um, I asked Guy at Master Mark, go on, you can tell old Joey Joe, can't you? He said, I absolutely know which one it is, but I'm not telling you. I said, I think I can guess which one it is. And he said, if you can guess which one it is, you're probably right. Uh, uh. So am I going to tell you what I think it is? Well, let, let me describe it first, this whiskey. Okay, so. Oh, it's definitely that North Island kind of uh, invigorating... briny, uh, sea-like smell, kind of kelpie smoke. I'll put some water in there, that'll really wake the drink up. Like Orangina. Um, so. <laughs> That's like smelling salts all of a sudden. Wow, I wish you could smell that. Wee-wah, woo-wah. Cool, right, okay. If I was to say this whiskey was very medicinal, that would rule out a lot of the competition. There is a very strong sense of iodine, which comes from obviously from the peat, and the most pure expression of iodine that I know is Lefroig. Whether it's Lefroig or not, I don't know, but Lefroig, 15 year old, has a very, very heavy share expression. So maybe this is similar to uh, Lefroig 15, but taken out of barrel early. Either way, it's flipping delicious. Absolutely fantastic. Um, uh, that is one of my two whiskies of the year, World Whiskey Day. Okay, right, so uh, that's three. We've got two more to go. We're nearly 20 minutes in. I didn't want it to be longer than 20 minutes. So coming on to the to penultimate whiskey. Isn't this a, a beautiful box and everything? Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Shout out to the Somerton crew, Somerton Whiskey Society, um, who very kindly have let me on their virtual... Um, uh, whiskey festival for the last two years um, and in return I've got to taste some really quite special drinks including this fella here now bugger me if I can remember the name of the bloke that's behind it but he came from the Edrington group the Edrington group is the kind of like the last word the non plus ultra of whiskies some of the whiskies they sell are collectible and sell for six figures we're talking hundreds of thousands of pounds, particularly old expressions of the Macallan. Um, I've been very fortunate to drink some of the whiskies before it was purchased from another one of their whis distilleries, distilleries, which is Glenrothes. Uh, I drank the 1971 and 1972 Glenrothes in the Berry Brothers and Rudd boardroom in London, the oldest wine merchant in the world. Um, I believe they used to own the um, distillery and it was moved to Edgerton Group. Um, and they're doing wonderful things with this whiskey. If you ever see um, Glenrothes, it comes in this kind of grenade shaped bottle. And they actually are one of the few people to have a vintage expression of whiskey, uh, but they also do multiple blends. Fantastic whiskies. Um, anyway, a couple of guys from there were going, must have spent every day sitting there going, well, if it was me, I'd dot, 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 dot. And I think they just saw that too many times. Went, oh, You know what? If we want what we want to do, if, if I want to see and realise the whiskey that I want to create, I'm going to have to do it myself, aren't I? 
So he went off and created this. And this is the maiden voyage. I think there's only 3,000 bottles of this first first bottle made. And it's absolutely wonderful. Um, again, let's recap on prices. Normally about 40 quid, just a shade under 36 pounds. This, ooh, um, 18 pounds normally down to about 13 pounds or thereabouts. But normally about 60 or 70 quid a whole bottle. Quite fancy. Aerolite Lindsay, a brilliant whiskey for 40 pounds. Um, 38, let's call it. Um, and if it's any cheaper than that, then you're not getting an absolute steal. Um, but just a fantastic whiskey. Uh, this fella's a little bit smarter at 50 quid. Um, 50 quid's quite a lot of money for a whiskey which has no age expression. If you look at that, it doesn't say where... And that's probably because of the whiskies they've bought. They may not know exactly how old the whiskies are. But this is what they call a vatted. So far we've been drinking single malt whiskies. A vatted malt is a blend of different malt whiskies. No grain, just pure malt, but it's a blend. And um, it's called Scalisei. I think that's how it's pronounced. And Scalisei is a beautiful little fishing town on the tiny um, Hebridean island of Colonsay. Dan Jago, if you're watching this, you probably know this whiskey. I hope you do. Um, but uh, Scalisei is a town on Colonsay. And um, this is a real beaut. Absolutely delicious whiskey. Um, and I poured this for my wife for the first time last night. And she, it was one of those moments where she just went, she really, really got it and just. It was just so nice to see the lights go on when someone drinks something that you think is super special, and they clearly do too. But Emma just went, oh, man, that's delicious. Right, so Scalisaig, the island hopper, so-called because the fellas behind it have mixed malted whiskies from that whole island and, and peninsula group to the uh, west of Scotland's mainland. So it's a whiskies mixed from Isla, Orkney, probably Mull as well, etc etc so it's kind of a mixture of all those little bits and bobs going on there look at the color this has got some badass cherry aging in it look at that so this is the color of cognac look at that Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. uh dark now um i don't know if it's if it's blasphemy making whiskies like this um but coming from the interesting group where um they were the king of of, of oak barrels. The Macallan is one of the darkest, most powerful, richest uh, whiskies known to man. Um, so they're taking some of that aging whiskey know-how and that aging know-how in, in maturation barrels and uh, applying it to Island and Isla whiskies. Yeah. Oh, smells of, um, yes. Okay. It's okay. This is seriously peaty as well, but not peaty in the pre precise medicinal bromine iodine way. Uh, that this Isla whiskey is. It's way more kind of layered than that. It's sweet on the nose, like sweet burning, sweet spruce and cherry wood. The kind of wood you'd smoke salmon over. Um, I'll put a tiny drop of water in there. It actually smells like it's probably a higher alcohol rate as well. well no, it's 43%, which is required for malt whiskey. Wow. Yeah, it smells of coffee. There's a little smell of coal tar. Almost like a screech of a BMX tyre or something in there. But beyond that, beautiful smell of smoke. Like a fire that's just going out. The smell of embers on a fire in a pub. Um, if you imagine the smell of a bit of malted beer left in the bottom of your jug. You've just half finished your pint of bitter. And in the background you can smell the smell of um, the embers of, the, of a sweet oak. Just so cosy and wonderful. On the palate, I just want to drink that water down with a grilled kipper. It just tastes of Arbroath Smokies, smoked herrings. There's a sweet, almost beautiful, cured, crispy, smoky bacon quality to it. And then underneath all that, there's a genuinely sweet fruit. Um, so mandarin, um, comfy pear. It's super complex. Down in one, you do the warrior. I'm not, I'm not wasting that for anyone. It's got to say. Bring us on to the last whiskey, which is a real weirdo. Um, and I think it was influenced, and I could be completely wrong about this, but um, I think it was influenced by a whiskey which I was very, very lucky to try with my dear friend Dan Prizman. If you're out there, sir, Dan Prizman, one of the great um, bourbon experts in, in, in the country, if not the world, he's been brand ambassador for Four Roses Bourbon, really knows his stuff. They had a whiskey bar up the, the road um, until recently. Uh, and he let me try this. This is um, from uh, the High West Distillery in Utah. 
in America. And it's called Yippee Ki Yay! No, I'm not going to say it. Um, but it does say High West says Yippee Ki Yay! And it's a Utah whiskey. And it's a rye whiskey. It's made from rye, and I love rye. I think I've mentioned this before when I've done uh, shows before. Catoctin uh, Creek. Catoctin Creek, sorry. Um, what was the other rye? And I did um, some Rittenhouse 100 on my first American whiskey show. Again, the Drinks Coach UK American whiskey, and I'll come up. So, uh, Yippee Kai 8, what, well, what am I going on about? Well, this whiskey, as you can see, is quite red in colour. And that's not bad rendering on shot uh, or a bad photo. It is actually then aged in Syrah or Shiraz barrels and vermouth barrels, red vermouth barrels. Somebody popped this in the post to me the other day. Uh, um, thank you very much to whoever it was. Um, I will be thanking you by linking you to this, uh, this show and to my Instagram post. This is Storning El Clasico. Um, this is a Danish whiskey. I don't know how old, probably not very old. Um, this was bottled in 2021. This is the first batch. And so new is it that I've looked at all your usual suspects, Master of Malt, Whiskey Exchange, and it's not on any, any of those sites yet. So I might have just actually got a scoop here for a change. And they will be, I'm sure it'll be available at Master of Malt. They've sold everything else that Storning's done. And they're a fantastic distillery in Denmark, trying all sorts of weird stuff. And this is Storning El Clasico, see that, research series. Well, why? Well, this is a Danish rye whiskey, rare enough in its own right, and they do all their own malting, uh, they do all their own um, uh, sort of like farm distilling, local barley, local rye, so it's a local water, uh, direct fired pot stills like they have in Scotland. It's been double distilled like the whis whiskies in Scotland, um, bottled on site, and then aged in vermouth barrels, exactly like the Yippie Kaye that I just showed you in the picture. This is also kind of like bond proof this is um like full strength bourbon 100 proof in american numbers anyway it's 50 percent alcohol so it's stronger than the others first of all when i smell it very clean it almost smells clean like a like a gin like a gin that's been rested in wood um there is the lovely kind of tangy orangey dry dusty notes of rye Add some water and that immediately explodes now. Now this smells like a Tennessee straight whiskey, um, albeit with lots of rye in it. Whoa! It's literally like being on a horse. It's so explosive. It, 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 I'm overcome with flavour. You can taste very expensive vermouth in there too. You know, it's cotchy or better. Uh, and it's put a whopping great smile on my face. And I think because of the ABV as well, even with the water added, you get a bit of a booze rush. But that's pretty special. I think you'll agree. The packaging's fantastic. Um, nobody would expect you to be buying wine, uh, whiskey from Denmark. Um, but that is an absolute banger. So, to recap, for World Whiskey Day, which was last Monday, who drinks whiskey on a bloody Monday? Right, Loch Lomond 12-year-old. Thumbs up. Smells a little odd, but when you get past that, it's absolutely delicious for drinking. Then, uh, one of the greats of the uh, whiskey industry, 15-year-old Slayer Reserve finish from, uh, from Glenfiddich. Aerolite Lindsay, or 10-year-old Isla, depending on how you want to call it. Um, beautiful whiskey, I think, probably uh, from the classic expression of Isla whiskey. Uh, just been sherried up a bit. Scalaseg from, uh, named after the village Colin on the Isle of Colonsay. Um, magical whiskey. Uh, if there was, a, if there are only three thousand bottles of this expression made, um, I should hurry up and get a couple. If I were you, I may well buy one. Um, so I've got one for Christmas because um, whatever the next one is, it's not going to be the same as this, and that's absolutely fantastic. And then we've got Storning at the end. See you next time.